this is Ken Kaplan from Kaplan Cycles on site at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Today I've got one, the legendary Yamaha VMAX to demo for you. This is one kick-ass bike. When this bike came out in 1985, I was 20 years old. I'm 51 now. And this thing is still the baddest ass cruiser on the street. Legendary performance. This one here has been customized. It has a full Kirker exhaust system and it has a full uh, K&N DinoJet kit. It has the four individual K&N air filters and the DinoJet kit on it. And it has an auxiliary fan on it. You hear that fan? There's not enough fan button to cool it. We fired this thing up. This thing's just nasty. I'm going to come up. You should hear it hit second and third gear. It sounds like a v supercharged V8. This is one kick-ass machine. Can you shut the fan off, please, Kenny? I grabbed the blue book out of my briefcase. So this is a legendary Yamaha VMAX, um, becoming increasingly hard to find in this kind of shape. This particular model, this particular one has, has 12,200 miles on it. And shut the other fan off, too. And uh, it's just been completely gone through by our service department. It needs nothing. Everything works excellent on it. Open up the 86 VMAX. The uh, bike's in the, uh, in my opinion, the best color for a VMAX is black. The thing's badass. You know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to get excited about a bike because we have over 250 bikes here in the museum. And this one here is uh, hard not to get excited over. With the, uh, even a stock VMAX is, is uh, something to brag about, but this one with the Kirker exhaust on it and the intake, the uh, open up intake, it, it sounds like a supercharged V8. I got the blue book here out just to show you. VMAXs have really, really gone up in value. The 86 VMAX has a number one value in the blue book of $11,400. I would say this bike with 12,000 miles on it and mechanically excellent is close to a number one. So uh, they've really, really gone up through the roof. Uh, not only is the bike mechanically perfect, but I also have a title to it right here. Good clean title. The uh, guy that we bought it from has owned it since 2012, I believe. It's a two owner bike. So if we just went through the entire bike front to back, did a 100 point inspection on it, checked the cylinder compression, it was 200 PSI in, in all four cylinders. Uh, we installed four brand new NGK spark plugs in it. We changed the engine oil and filter, uh, changed the engine coolant, and the reservoir bottle was uh, built. Uh, we um, it has four K and air filters on it, so it, it definitely breathes better better in the stock. So we cleaned and oiled the K and filters, and we took the carburetors off and went right through them. The, the gentleman who worked on these at our shop has uh, been a motorcycle mechanic for almost 30 years and has built some concourse quality AMA championship winning bikes and he's the best we've ever had at, at working on carburetors. So he completely removed the carbs, cleaned them, adjusted them, they went through our hydrosonic cleaning process and our hydrosonic tank. 
uh, new gaskets, new O-rings, new rubber plugs, and a DynoJet stage, uh, stage 3 kit was installed. Uh, brand new fuel lines from the pump to the carb. So the whole fuel system, the tank was cleaned out, it's got fresh fuel in it. It's never carbureted better than this since it was brand new, I guarantee you that. The, um, actually it's carbureted better than brand new with the stage 3 kit in it. Has a brand new UASA top of the line battery. Uh, we checked the charging system, that was perfect. We installed the battery tender lead for the trickle charger so you can keep it plugged in if you're not riding it every day. Uh, the throttle pipe was taken off and the throttle pipe and handlebar was uh, pressure, pressure looped and the cables were pressure looped and adjusted for the free play. So everything on the, on the uh, carburetion system and throttle is mint. The cars were synchronized, professionally synchronized with a four, uh, with a, uh, all four cars were synchronized perfectly and the mixture screws were adjusted. Uh, the final drive gear oil was changed, the tire pressures were adjusted, inspe inspected the front and rear suspension, inspected the steering head bearings, inspected the wheel bearings and tires and brake pads, everything checked out perfect on it. Um, we changed the brake fluid and um, also the, the hydraulic clutch fluid, so it has a hydraulic clutch and a hydraulic brake, uh, both were flushed and filled and bled. Uh, all as you saw, all electrical functions on the bike are perfect. We test rode it, I rode it, I test rode it four or five times. I couldn't get off the bike. It's so much fun to ride and it sounds so nasty. I had a hot rod, we just sold it. I had a hot rod Harley-Davidson FXRSSP with a 1639cc Ultima uh, crate street and strip motor and that thing pales in comparison to this bike. That bike, it was a built Harley and it only had 100 horse at the rear wheel. This has 100 and Came here for us 150 horsepower the rear, rear wheel. So um, here's the uh, literature on the Dino Jet kit. Um, the four chrome Canaan air filters are underneath the uh, the cover, and um, it also has the Kirker exhaust, which you can see on the bike, obviously. So just a fantastic bike. I haven't seen one of these on the road around here in a long time. Uh, the services we just performed on the bike. I've got the. Um, I've got the, the invoice here was $1,265.12 of service that was just and parts that were just put into the bike. Um, the Kirker exhaust is over $1,000. Then of course you got the K&N intake uh, filters and the DynoJet kit. So there's a couple thousand dollars of extras on this bike. Um, so it's, a, it's just an awesome looking sport cruiser. Sounds incredible. Um, power bands, broad and wide. And it was Cycle Guys Bike of the Year back in 1985. And so, um, so it's a, it's an awesome bike. Um, that's pretty much pretty much uh, everything we did to the bike here. Um, it's been fully inspected, gone through front to back, and uh, a hot rod at heart. The Yamaha V Max is also a surprisingly good road bike with predictable handling in the corners and a willingness to eat up the miles. I'm, I'm gonna read some stuff from some motorcycle magazines that I uh, took out here. Uh, it was rated um, at 145 horsepower at the rear wheel. It would do 150 miles per hour and it has an 1198cc double overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, water cooled 70 degree V4. The, um, in 1985, this brand new 1198cc 70 degree V4 Monster VMAX was an unapologetic two wheeled hot rod. Um, Kenny, can you please be quiet? I'm trying to record a video here. Um, it was the undisputed king of the boulevard and the most American bike ever to come out of Japan. Virtually un unchanged 22 years later, it still may be. The VMAX boasts an unheard of road burning acceleration, introducing Yamaha's innovative V Boost technology and raised the stakes for the then new muscle cruiser category. Its looks, while jarring at the time, predated the, predated the styling of the Harley Davidson V Rod. From its headlights and cell to its square heads, V layout, and wide, low slung, low slung wheelbase and fat tires, it's an icon of motorcycling. It has enjoyed a rare 20 year plus production, has built a worldwide fan following with V Max clubs from France to Japan, and still earns reverence and accolades from top motorcycle publications each model year, today, even. This is a bike built for the moody loner. No factory rappler racer replendent in rainbow hues. No weekend off-roading with the kids. The VMAX is all about wicked attitude and spades. Anti-social behavior and burning up the other guy in spotlight to, spotlight to stoplight races. The VMAX was a hooligan bike a decade before the term existed. Um, in line out, the V4 revolution. When it was uh, 
they, they, they cover some stuff on the Honda 70. It's kind of irrelevant, so I'll skip over that so, over that stuff. So um, when they built this, they wanted to meet and beat the competition by building the strongest V4 motorcycle on the market. And from the start, mind-blowing acceleration was a prerequisite. The first concept I, I imagined. Akira Araki, project leader for the VMAX and now general manager for Yamaha's motorcycle operations in Japan, has stated, was to make a bike which is strong and straight lines and really fast. It was the birth of the VMAX concept, <clears throat> he said. It was the American hot rod. In 1983, Araki and two Yamaha engineers pulled up for 30 days in the, in the uh, design studios and, and designed this bike. The bike would come together as part of the most American of formulas, which has worked for everything from muscle cars to the 44 Magnus and Mack trucks. Shoehorn big ass horsepower into a strong, simple frame. Dispense with all the bells and whistles and don't add an ounce of anything unnecessary. The goal was a balls out performer with wide mid range. And the logical starting point, point was the V4 from Yamaha's own Venture Tour. Displacing 1198 cc's with a 10.51 compression ratio and 4 pounds per cylinder, it was a solid 150 horsepower power plant that already possessed strong low and mid range. So, uh, to further increase the horsepower, Iraqi's team considered using a turbo before devising the innovative V-Boost, which is like a supercharger. That's why it sounds like it's supercharged. In this system, a passageway links the intake manifolds of the front and rear cylinders on each side of the engine with cylinder number one, linked to number two and number three to number four. Two server-operated butterfly valves, one between each cylinder pair, close off the passages at low RPM. But past 6,000 RPM, the servo opens the butterflies and whatever cylinder is drawing a charge at any given moment is filled with the air-fuel mixture from two carburetors, supercharging the cylinder. Styling, not surprisingly, took its inspiration from Detroit muscle cars and American drag strips. Probably Max's most instantly recognizable styling touch is a set of imposing chrome air scoops astride the gas tank. A staggering 62-inch wheelbase leads you around to the gargantuan 150-95 section rear Bridgestone tire. At the time of the VMAX introduction, this was the widest tire ever seen on a production motorcycle. The VMAX's tires were necessarily large and soft. Its claimed 145 horsepower and rocket takeoffs meant the rider would need all the traction he could get. The result was a motorcycle that absolutely shouted the American credo of go faster, roar louder, and be, and be meaner and the max guaranteed dragging rights. No other cruiser would accelerate faster from stoplight to stoplight. Debuting in, at an October 84 U.S. dealer meeting in Las Vegas, the VMAX garnered immediate anticipation and praise from the motorcycle and press. <clears throat> Those seeking performance at a blunt statement found it worth every nickel. Cycle Guide named it Bike of the Year, calling the max outrageous and the most thrill intensive motorcycle of 1985 with references to blown V8s and Hemi heads, comparisons to fuel drag dragsters, and the assertion that Max was motorcycling's first hot rod. Perfectly clear about the image I wanted to, ca to capture, Yamaha kept it the same for years. Period magazines continued to theme spla splashing their evaluations with photo spreads of the VMAX on drag strips. Cycle World even pitted a Max against a Shelby Cobra, which it smoked for bragging rights. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I guess I'll sum it up by um, reading some press reviews that I found online for, for the uh, for the VMAX. This is from Cycle Guide, May 1985. When it comes to street legal production motorcycles, nothing, absolutely nothing, can touch it in a straight line. Cycle World, May of 1985. That was Cycle Guide. The owner of Cycle World. When you cruise the streets on a VMAX, you aren't innocently looking for someone to race with. You're trolling for fresh victims for poor, unsuspecting souls to chew up and spit out of your exhaust pipes. Here's one from Motorcyclist, April 1986. It's still the best motorcycle overall, the big cruisers. Its engine is above reproach, and the chassis is the, is the finest in, an, in the class. Only its seat and somewhat choppy ride keep it from being as comfortable, comfortable as, as the full-scale touring bikes. Okay, and then Cycle World. Yamaha's fire-breathing VMAX is about as supple as a whack across the forehead with a running chainsaw. That's a good one. Um, and then I'll sum it up with Cycle World in 1988. In a perverse sort of way, the VMAX is a much sought after bike of the 80s. In fact, the VMAX is more like a two-wheeled money car, but the bike's foot peg location, handlebar bend, and overall riding position are all very comfortable. That pretty much sums it up.
the um, V Max has been one of my uh, one of my um, favorite bikes since I was a kid. Like I said, this bike came out when I was 20 years old. I'm 51. This bike's 30 years old, and to find one like this and with 12,000 original miles that runs as well as this one does with everything perfect is is a rare commodity. And after riding, I think it's worth every bit of what the NADA Blue Book said it's worth. Uh, all the proceeds from the sale of the bike are going to the New England Motorcycle Museum to fund the finish of the big building, so it's going to a good cause. If you have any questions about the bike, give us a call 860-454-7024, uh, or come right down and take a look at it. The bike's on display in the museum showroom right now, and uh, it's going to sell to the high bidder or the low reserve, so good luck bidding. And have a, whoever gets it is going to have a heck of a fun summer on it. The bikes in, and if it's in this good a shape after 30 years, if you take care of it, it'll last another 30. So good luck bidding and God bless.